Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our midweek service. Last week, I talked about our core belief. And our core belief was instilled in us at, the, at birth. And according to Mary O'Malley in her book here, that is fully formed within each human being by the age of six. So imagine that if we are still approaching things in our lives from a belief system that was totally formed within us at birth and, and fully mature by the age of six. I'm not sure I want to be operating from a six-year-old's consciousness anymore. I want to see if maybe I can evolve that consciousness. You know, our, there was a famous quote from Einstein that says, you can't solve a problem at the same consciousness that created it. You cannot solve a problem from the same consciousness that created it. In other words, if we are looking at something from that point of view of that six-year-old, even if I'm in my 60-year-old body here, if I'm coming at it from a point of view of, I've got to fix something. There's something wrong here. I'm having tons of judgment about it, and I've got to fix it. Then I'm still operating in the same consciousness that created the problem. But if I can begin to come at it from a different point of view, from that state of curiosity, wonder, and awe about what's happening, even those things that I don't like that are happening to me, if I can begin to, to look at that from that point of view, then I begin to have a different experience in my life. So let's just take a look at, uh, at a very simple example of this. So right now I am sitting in a chair. Now normally when I give a talk, I stand. It's something that I prefer to do. I feel more in alignment. I don't like stand up taller. It's just like there's a, a better voice that comes forth from me because I don't have the constriction of my diaphragm and all this stuff. I generally stand when I'm talking. But I purposely sat today because I wanted to see if you are can become aware of judgments that you may be experiencing right now. And so this is a very simple, easy way of doing this. So as you noticed me sitting here in my chair, did you happen to witness any kind of judgment that you might be having about that? If you happen to notice that I'm in my office here at home, was there anything about my office that ju that you felt judgy about? Anything in my office that, that kind of tweaked you? Like, I like lots of little statues and things like that, so I got a lot of them behind me. Each one of them represents a, a moment in my spiritual journey that's important to me. Um, I have a, a plant here. I happen to love bamboo. I think that's one of the most phenomenal plants, and this was gifted to me by a dear friend, so it's very meaningful to me. Over here, I have a picture right there, that my um, mother gave to me. It has words written on it. You probably can't read the words that are on there. And you may have judged that. Like, why put a picture in the background that's that's distracting to everybody because there's words on it and I can't read them. And in case you want to know, it says, be the change you want to see in the world. And it, my mother gave it to me not too long before she passed. And um, she didn't understand the significance of it. She didn't know it was spoken by Mahatma Gandhi and that he is a powerful influence in my life. But it's a, it means something to me. It's a beautiful representation of not only this um, high idea of um, being a transformative force in the world, but it's also of my mother. Right behind me is a painting that I did this summer. I'm, I happen to draw mandalas, and I wanted to try to see if I could put that together in a canvas. Um, it's not perfect. It's kind of got some uh, metallic... Um, paint on it that reflects in the light. And so maybe that was distracting to you. Maybe there was judgment. Over here on the side, you can see some cords going to my Wi-Fi and to my printer and things like that. Maybe you thought, how unprofessional. You can't have cords in the background. But just begin to notice, what is your judgment here? What is, what is happening within you when you see somebody behaving in a way that you don't like or, or showing up the way you don't think it should be? What's happening in, inside of you at that moment? As I pointed these things out, did you have any kind of reaction to that? It's interesting to begin to notice the things in our life because I can guarantee you anything that you noticed about me or my background or anything like that is magnified tenfold in how hard you are on yourself. One of my favorite singers, Michael Gott, says in one of his songs, he says, I never say to anyone the things I say in my own mind. So what are you saying in your own mind? What are those judgments that you are having? You know, a big part of Mary O'Malley's book talks about this dualistic nature of our mind. Now, here in Centers for Spiritual Living, we believe that there's only one and everything is that one. But our functioning mind operates in a dualistic level. 
we have um, we have a part of us that is actually consciously thinking, and then we have a part of ourselves that's aware of what is being thought. There have been many, many names for this throughout the ages by different spiritual teachers. Um, and um, in her book, Mary O'Malley calls that that thinking mind that's always chattering. She calls it the storyteller. It's always making up stories about things. So it's the thing that's judging. It's the thing that thinks it has to fix. Um, some of my favorite authors, Joe Goldsmith calls it the carnal mind. Michael Singer calls it the witness or the inner roommate. So it's that idea that there's something, I'm sorry, he doesn't call it the witness. He calls it the inner roommate. The witness is something else altogether. So anyway, we have this judging part of our body, this part that is generally it's chattering. Um, the Buddhists call this in meditation, the monkey mind. It's the thing that just starts going like crazy whenever you try to quiet your mind. But there's always a part of you that is witnessing that. That's what Michael Singer calls the witness. That is the part of us that is the higher self. Joel Coldsmith calls it the Christ consciousness. It is the part of us that sees that. Mary O'Malley refers to it oftentimes as the self, the self with a capital S. So let's just do a little example of how this is operating in our lives. So I want you to just take a moment, close your eyes, and silently in your own mind, I want you to repeat the word peace. And just do this several times. Just repeat in your silence of your mind the word peace. Okay. Now, there's a part of you that's saying the word peace. And there's a part of you that knows you're saying the word peace. Try it again. Say the word peace over to yourself and see if you can differentiate the part of you that is actually saying it versus the part of you that knows you are saying it. It's very fascinating to begin to watch how our minds are working and how they're operating in our lives. And if we begin to spend less time listening to that chattering storyteller and more times being become aware of it through the witness consciousness, through the higher self, through the Christ consciousness, if we spend more time looking at how that chattering mind is thinking, we begin to release ourselves from the need to fix it and we become more curious about what is available to us to know and experience through that. Because there's something always there for us. When we begin to actually become aware of this dualistic nature of our mind, then that's a place where we can begin to change and, change and transform our lives in powerful ways. Mary O'Malley says that curiosity is what enables you to tease your attention out of the problem factory of your mind so that you can see your experience anew. Curiosity is what enables you to tease your attention out of the problem factory of your mind, the place that's making up all the stories, so that you can see your experience anew. When we begin to apply curiosity, instead of judgment and the need to fix, to our everyday situations in life, we can then get out of the situation and see, more readily see a solution to it. More readily see what is available for us to know in the situation and how the, and, and allow that situation to move through our lives more quickly. We apply this in different ways with different um, practices that we do, but it's all about becoming more aware of what's going on in our life. Mary O'Malley talks about this idea of focused attention. She says that focused attention is like a laser that with its concentrated beam brings the healing power of curiosity to your immediate experience. So imagine that you're driving down the road and somebody pulls in front of you and cuts you off. You have an, an instant reaction at that moment. Can you approach that, that situation from a place of curiosity or a place of judgment? Both, are gonna, both can be operating in your life and they can actually be operating at the same time. We can think that that person that was driving is a, 
crazy driver and irresponsible and doesn't know what they're doing, shouldn't be on the road and all those things that we tell ourselves when we are having a reaction to this situation. Or we can approach it from a place of curiosity. What's happening in this person that they did whatever they did? What is happening here? Why am I having such a reaction to it? Is this, is this thing going to in any way inhibit me? Is this going to be detrimental to me? Sometimes, sometimes it's a little crazy out there. And so we have to be a little more cautious ourselves. But for the most part, these simple incidents that happen to us throughout the day really don't have an effect upon us unless we allow it to. And if we allow it to, to do that because we're judging it or trying to fix it or we're angry about it, all of those things, anger, fear, judgment, all of that comes from that need to want to control things. We spend so much of our time in life trying to control the situations that are happening around us that um, we lose the sight of what is available to us through these things. So again, that laser attention, bringing our awareness to a situation, to a problem, and seeing what's available to us through that act of curiosity. It is a very, very powerful force. She says, she goes on to say that when we stop trying to fix life and instead become present in our own experience, we come into alignment with life with a capital L. Life as in that divine infinite nature of spirit that is moving through us into manifestation at all times. When we stop trying to fix it and instead become present with what is happening to us, it, happening in us right now, in this experience, what is happening right in this experience? We become more in alignment with spirit. We become more aligned with what's, what is the truth here? What is the reality with a capital R? Not what my judgment is telling me about this situation, but what is here for me to know? Now, there are many, many powerful practices that we can do to help us get to this place. One of the things that I really like to work with is... Um, Meditation, and, and meditation can be such a powerful experience if we are open to what's available there for us. So let's take a look at um, our bodies, and I want to take you through a little bit of a meditation with our body that can apply the power of curiosity to deepen our experience of it. So if you would, just get yourself all comfortable however that works in your life. You may choose to close your eyes and um, take in a few conscious deep breaths. There's something really powerful about uh, tapping into our bodies. We spend most of our time not being aware of our bodies. But when we apply the power of curiosity to it, we can deepen our ability to experience what it is we are truly experiencing in the moment. The body is a tangible way of connecting with that inner life force. Often we spend too much time in our minds and we think of our body as a vehicle to carry it around the world. But our bodies can become one of our best friends. There is a natural wisdom that is inherent in the body. And our bodies can actually tell us what we're experiencing in the moment long before our mind does. Our bodies are always communicating with this natural wisdom to us. But I don't think we've really been taught how to listen to it. So, settling yourself into your seat, Bring your awareness and your attention to your body for just a few moments. Just see if you notice anything. Now I'd like you to see if you can identify three distinct sensations in your body. It may be 
that you're a little cold. It may be that there's someplace stiff on your body. It may be that you're feeling a sense of tightness or fullness. You've got tingles or aches. Just see if you can identify and name three distinct sensations that you're feeling right now. And now begin to notice if your mind keeps moving back to that storyteller, that chattering mind that is thinking something else. And it could be any kind of thoughts. You could be saying to yourself in your mind, oh, I've done this before, or what's the point of this? Or you might find yourself attached to one of those sensations and then go into a cycle of trying to figure out what it's about. What is, why is that pain there? Is there something wrong with me? I shouldn't be having this pain. Oh, that's the same pain I had two weeks ago. How, are you, how is your storyteller acting in your mind? So sit with those sensations and just notice what's happening in your mind. When you become aware of that storyteller, see if you can bring it back to just the sensation without the judgment. Now notice, are you feeling any resistance to doing this? Has your mind become bored very quickly and moved on to another thing? That laundry list of things you have to do, the conversation you had with someone earlier today. Did you start thinking about something in the past or worrying about something in the future? Don't judge it, just notice it. All right, just taking a couple deep breaths and bring your attention back to our time together here. Mary O'Malley says, curiosity is where the magic happens. Curiosity is where the magic happens. And what we've been exploring here tonight is what she calls true alchemy. You know, in the Days of old, they called alchemy that transformation of lead into gold or something worthless into something valuable. She considers this to be the alchemy of consciousness, of, I'm sorry, the alchemy of unconsciousness into consciousness. Moving from a state of unconscious reaction to a state of consciousness that it has that in, in, innate curiosity in it. It's about becoming aware of our dualistic mind, that dualistic part of our mind that's been operating throughout our entire lives to distract us, to keep us safe, to keep itself safe. There is a separate part of us that is operating at all time. And as we become more and more aware of it, we can begin to transform it. Most of our lives, we've been subject to the storyteller's interpretation of our experiences. The storyteller makes up stories. 
it has it experiences something and it tries to find reason and justify or blame or shame or any of those feelings that are going on there. The storyteller tells us things like, I am separate. I'm not safe. I'm not enough. And I must learn how to control this. In order to stay safe and sound and secure in our life, our storyteller is very active. But we are under the spell of its illusion. We have spent most of our lives under this spell. That these things that it's saying have convinced us that it is the thing we need to be listening to instead of our higher selves, instead of our true nature, instead of that deep abiding consciousness that brought us into existence and is moving through us all of the time. But the storyteller chatters a lot and it wants to keep our focus on it because again, that makes it feel safe and in control. Now we, the storyteller has its spells that it uses, but we also have our own spells. Sometimes we call these spells affirmations or prayer. They are the spiritual practices that we have learned to use. And trust me, they are pure magic. They are the things that will transform our lives. This way of becoming aware of what is really happening within our own little dualistic consciousness that is working through us all the time. Again, trying to keep us safe, trying to keep itself in control, trying to, to um, manage a situation. And if we begin to become more aware of it, then we can allow our higher self to operate better. Applying these spells, if you will, to our, to our situations will silence that inner storyteller. And we begin to live a life of freedom, a life of peace, a life of ease. The more we can quiet that chattering mind, the more we can stop attaching blame and judgment and um, the need to control to our experiences. That's curiosity. And that curiosity leads to magic. We can make magic happen in our lives each and every day through this practical application of this idea of exploring things from a state of curiosity instead of, instead of a state of judgment a state of trying to fix it instead of into a state of just being with it. I think this is one of those spiritual practices that really truly has to be applied consistently and consciously throughout our daily lives. Every time we're faced with a situation, every time we're, we have a challenge, begin to notice how we're behaving with it, how we're reacting to it, and what is the operating force in our life and then hit it with a little magic. <sighs> so let's take this into prayer. Again, prayer is one of our magic spells. It's one of those things that can bring about a great transformation. And so um, we have a, a form of prayer we call spiritual mind treatment. It is an affirmative prayer. It uses affirmations, more spells in there, to... Um, Recognize the presence of the divine, that indwelling and in universal presence that is moving through us, that universal consciousness, the Christ consciousness, the spirit, the mother, father, God, whatever it is that we want to call it, it is operating within us at all times. Our task is to become aware of it. And through the spiritual mind tribute of recognizing that divine, that is more solidifies it within our being. A second stage of treatment is to unify ourselves with it. If this is what spirit is, and spirit is all there is, then I've got to be part of it too. And in the third stage, we state those spiritual truths that we know that apply to the situation we're dealing with. We give thanks and we let it go. So join me now in spiritual mind treatment. And so as I settle into this place of deep peace, I sense and feel that presence within me, right at my heart center. I 
I know it is the driving force of my life. That this loving creative intelligence brought itself forth into expression as all life. Right from the very beginning, there was nothing else but this one thing. And this one thing took action and brought back, brought forth all things. And in that creative process, it endowed it with everything that it is. With that creative intelligence, with that love, with that passion and purpose, with that infinite wisdom and divine harmony, that is what spirit is. That is the very nature of this creative, eternal presence. And because I know that there is only this one thing, I know that I am one with it. I know that that very passion lies in the heart of my being. That I am a creation of love with purpose, with wisdom, with clarity, moving through me at all times. And as I know this is true for me, I know this is true for all beings. I know that each one of us is that perfect, unique emanation of the one, filled with all that the one is, that love intelligence, that eternal, infinite wisdom, that perfection and harmony. That is the truth of all life. And so knowing this, I speak my word. I know that right here and right now, each one of us is endowed with everything we could possibly ever need to be the fullest expression of the divine right here and right now. Our own, only hindrance is our own inner storyteller. And as we become more aware of how it operates in our lives, we create a greater space for the divine to move through us. We create a greater space for this love intelligence to bring itself forth in expression as our lives. And boy, that's where the ha magic happens. That's where our lives begin unfolding under perfection and harmony and grace and ease. I am so excited to feel this. I am so excited to know this. And I give great thanks for the opportunity to just simply rest in this consciousness of one and know that it is operating right here and right now. And so I release this word into that creative mind that has absolutely no lack or limitation to it. It is pouring itself forth into expression through the most abundant and magnificent ways. And I release this word and I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Here at Center for Spirits Living Greater Las Vegas, we are a mission and vision driven community. We offer transformative educational opportunities, deep and meaningful moments of connection, uplifting Wednesday and Sunday services. We greatly appreciate your contributions that support the amazing work we're doing here in Southern Nevada. We have several easy ways you can contribute. We have text to give. Simply text the amount of your donation to our text to give number and you'll be prompted to enter your information. There's a link to our online donation page posted below this video where you can contribute by debit or credit card. And of course, you're always welcome to send a check to our office if that works better for you. All of your contributions go to support the great work that we're doing here in Greater Las Vegas community. I'm only here for God I release and I let go I 
I let the Spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Sing it up. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. Again now. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. I'm only here for God No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only Science of Mind magazine is a treasure to be read and contemplated. Along with in-depth articles, there is a day-to-day -day spiritual support to be gleaned from its daily guides. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This is a weekly group discussion that focuses on those daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. CSL Greater Las Vegas brings you much of your favorite spiritual music every Friday at 7 p.m. with spiritual soundscapes. Enjoy performances from CSL GLV vocalists along with special guest singers. It's music for your soul. Subscribe to the CSL GLV YouTube channel to get a convenient link sent to you for each musical performance. At CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the all-inclusive vision of Centers for Spiritual Living worldwide in which we envision a world that works for everyone and all of 